Welcome to Scale Model Workshop. Previously, I presented two different approaches to converting the two most current state-of-the-art Spitfire kits to an early Griffin Spitfire Mark 14. The first approach was the most conservative and simply used the Airfix FR Mark 14 kit, substituting a conventional windscreen and hood, and then fairing in the spine with a small piece of basswood. The results are Mark 14E. The second method involved more surgery. Starting with an Edwards Spitfire Mark 8 kit, the airframe was modified a la Supermarine using appropriate pieces from the Airfix FR Mark 14 kit. This method yielded a Spitfire Mark 14C. I personally feel that both these methods produce the best conventional hood Mark 14 available today and perhaps for the foreseeable future. The interchangeability of the parts between the latest Airfix kit and the Edward kit seemed to offer, at least for me, a certain confirmation of the dimensions and shape. However, there's a small contingent of modelers who, for several reasons, still rationalize touting a more dated approach that combines the out-of-production Airfix PR-19 kit with a wing from the elderly ICM Spitfire. So if you're considering this approach, here are some observations that you might want to take into account before you embark. Compare the fuselage of the Airfix PR-19 on the top and the new FR Mark 14 on the bottom. Starting from the vertical stabilizer and moving forward, you can see that the PR-19 wing is mounted slightly more forward and is a bit narrower than the FR-14. The windscreen of the 19 is more forward than the FR-14. The most forward edge of the fuel tank cover on the 19 is even more forward. Strikingly, the rear of the rocker bulge on the 19 is much further forward than the FR-14. The consequences of this will be even more apparent in the side views. The 19 fuselage ends up slightly longer than the FR-14. Width-wise, the 19 is wider than the FR-14. Comparing the bulge over the rocker cover reveals even more differences. The contour and outline of the front portion of the bulge is different. The extension, outline, and contour of the rear portion of the bulge is extremely different. I don't understand why Airfix has tapered the opening for the exhaust stacks on the 19, and while it's not as prominent, they did it on the FR-14 as well. Comparing the two with an actual example, I think you can see that the FR-14 rendition is closer to the prototype. Looking at the two spinners also reveals a few differences. The 19 spinner is more rounded and actually slightly smaller in diameter than the FR-14. This seems a bit odd given the fact that the forward fuselage of the 19 kit is slightly longer and wider than the FR-14 fuselage, so proportionally you'd expect to see the spinner slightly larger. Finally, the Airfix PR-19 lacks the characteristic gull shape where the trailing edge of the wing meets the fillet. Here I'm showing it with an Edward wing. Both the Edward wing and the new Airfix wing simulate this feature nicely. The PR-19 ICM combination lacks this element. So if you want to use an Edward or new Airfix wing, you'll find that you need to do some recontouring, as well as a fair amount of other adjustments that I haven't shown here. So there are differences between Airfix's two renditions of a Griffin Spitfire that should, for all intents and purposes, be the same. I would never claim to be an expert on Spitfires, and I couldn't tell you whether anything was manufactured at Castle Bromwich or Fred Thursday's Garage. However, I have a lot of books on the Spitfire, and I have eaten mushy peas, and I'll defer to Richard Frank's assessment that seems to give the nod to the FR-14 kit. So with that detour out of the way, let me move on to some tips for finishing up these conversions. First up's the Airfix conversion. The two halves of the horizontal stabilizer on the Airfix kit is a bit lacking in a positive lock, so I used a solid straight edge to ensure their alignment. Because of the flex in the elevator assembly, I prefer to use a piece of rod stock to establish proper mounting.
In order to maintain the alignment of the ailerons and have a surface to cement to, I added a thin styrene shim. The poor fit of the radiators in the airfix kit leave them sitting in a very elevated position with a bit of irregular spacing all around. So you'll want to spend a little time here making some adjustments to improve their fit. Likewise, a little final blending and shaping will better adapt the clipped wing cap. I'm building wheels up and the doors have a very thick cross section, so a little thinning's in order. One unsightly oversight that I see with a lot of models is the lack of attention paid to how the spinner and cowl align and blend together. Here I'm using the hub of the spinner to center the prop mount and then do a little selective recontouring to remove some of the irregularities. The prop blades seem a touch wide and the tips a bit squarish for an early prop, so I did a very slight bit of reshaping. The round exhaust stacks have a fair amount of flash that needs to be cleaned up. I find a small hand vise like this is invaluable. The ends of the stacks are squared up. So as not to nick up the other stacks, I use a safe edge file. Airfix's gun mounts are a bit weak, as is the shape of their gun tubes. So I squared them off at the root and adapted some Edward tubes. Here are the bits ready for primer and paint. Turning to the Edward conversion, I needed to close the tailwheel doors, and what Edward supplies are useless. So here's a trick that I frequently use to work around ill-fitting gear doors. I mixed up a bit of Hydrocal. Hydrocal is basically a harder and more refined plaster. As it starts to harden, it becomes easy to carve and shape. At this stage, it's softer than the surrounding plastic, so it's easy to trace the outline. When it hardens, you can wet sand it if necessary. The surface was sealed with a bit of thin cyanoacrylate. Here I've used the same method to create the doors for a Tamiya P51B. Apoxy clay was used to fill the voids around the rocker bulges and the gaps around the new larger radiator housings. Here's the final primed nose join. The balance of any surface detail will be added back after I prime the entire airframe. I use Mr. Dissolve Putty to fill the hatch that will be moved to the starboard side. I like it better than Mr. Surfacer 500 because it flows better and it cleans off with alcohol the same way. The horizontal stabilizer was cemented to place in the same manner as the airfix conversion. The pieces that fill in around the elevator rod were trimmed and cemented in. I split the common elevator and each side was cemented separately. Here's the Edward airfix conversion ready for primer and paint. Both conversions are now in the queue for the Spitfire paint booth.